If you're a primary teacher looking for a great way to teach history and inspire your pupils to produce some quality writing, then there's nothing like a good story. At Eastville Primary School in Middlesex, Year 6 teacher Graeme Hicks is doing just that. Everywhere. It was hot. It was sticky. The land just went on forever. In the heat of those tricky post-SATS weeks, he transports his pupils back in time. And that was the time I saw wounded soldiers, leg wounds, head wounds, and some far more serious. By interweaving a fictional story with actual historical events and sources, he pulls them deeper into his world. How did you feel when you saw all those injured people? Scared. I felt this could actually happen to me. Inspired imaginations leads to some inspired writing. It's better here than it was in France. You'd be lucky to get a smile out of any French. It's a six-week block of work involving a fictitious character, Wolfgang Dremler, who I've placed in the context of the German army in the early part of the Second World War. Although the story is fictitious, everything happened. I, I look on it more as a historical novel, so everything fits together. So I think that's also what the children want it to be authentic as well. Today, ex-LEA inspector and history consultant Bernie Ashmore has come to watch Graham in one of his double history sessions. He'll examine how this novel, cross-curricular approach impacts on the pupils' learning as they head towards secondary school. Now, as you remember, Wolfgang had been sent to France, but can anyone remember why he couldn't get to Britain? Robbie? Because um, the German Air Force could not destroy the RAF, so they couldn't move into Britain. Right, OK, good answer. And if you remember, he went on leave, didn't he? He went back to Germany and he met Clara. Can you remember anything that happened while he was back in Berlin? Janet? Clara didn't seem to be interested in the things that he was interested in. Yes, and that's a good idea. They, he felt they'd almost like grown apart, hadn't they? Well, I think what Graham does with his history is take certain aspects that are expected to be covered in the national curriculum, and not normally the usual ones. Normally, teachers cover chronology and some of the factual knowledge. Graham's really working on how the past is represented and the uh, interpretation of the past. It does deliver on historic knowledge and engages the pupils. Now, today, I'm going to put the coat on, and then I will tell you the next instalment of the story. We arrived in a town, it's quite a large town, and there we were told we were going to be staying for some weeks. It was a very strange place. It was in a country we now call the Ukraine. They gave us milk and salt. Strange gifts, you would think, but for Ukrainians, it is a sign of hospitality. Once you put the coat on, it is quite amazing. All I focus on is the image I can see as Wolfgang, because I didn't actually know this character. I've got control of him, so whatever I feel I want him to be able to do, I can do it, providing it's within a historical context. You'd be given Russian bread. This is what we ate until we waited for bread from home. What do you think? Tastes like oat. Tastes like oats, does it? So you can imagine living on this bed. But one day, I couldn't believe it. Addressed to me, a parcel from Berlin. Inside was a letter. Dearest Wolfgang, how are you? I hope all is well with you. The news seems very good. Last night, I went with your mother and father to the cinema and we saw the film of the advance. I looked hard for you but I couldn't see you. I hope you enjoy the food parcel. Bread, German bread. Tell us what you think. Much better. You like that, do you? You think Clara's done me proud? Mm -hmm. I wanted to take the German viewpoint through an ordinary person, Genuine made it deliberately so he's not a particularly politically motivated person, because they will have done the Second World War in year four, and they will have followed a very much British version of events. So now I've challenged it, by saying, well, this is what it was like in Germany in the 1930s, and this is the product. And Wolfgang is a, a product of that time. I'm just going to show you a little bit of footage. We received an order in the town that we were to set up a hospital. I suppose a hospital had been open a couple of days. 
when trucks started to come back from the east where we hadn't yet gone. That was the time I saw wounded soldiers brought in leg wounds, head wounds, arm wounds and some far more serious. I try at each lesson to incorporate film, also plenty of photographs, so I try to use as many historical sources as I possibly can find, partly for effect, but if it's not authentic it's not history. So that gives you some idea of the work that went on in the hospital. But then the orders came. We were told we were heading for a village. The roads were dusty. There was dust everywhere. It was hot. It was sticky. And out of the mists and the fog, I could see some figures. But all around them was what was left of their village. I know at the beginning of the story where I'm starting from and I have a goal at the end and I somehow I've got to get him there. I mean I wanted to leave the village with just that image, almost cliffhanger sort of so the children want to know what's going to happen next. Does anyone want to ask any questions about anything you've heard? Robbie? Do you think it was the Germans who smashed that town or someone else? I, it could be either. It could be the Russian army pulling back. I'd heard uh, uh, things that the Russians, when they retreated, they burnt everything. So we Germans would have nothing to live on. It's what you call scorched earth. Yes, Katarina? Um, did you get bored of waiting for a fight in the war? Yes. In fact, <coughs> someone once said, well, you spend most of your time hanging about, and then you have about half an hour of sheer panic. Like on the day that you was going to go to the war or think? Scared, I think is the best way. I mean, I'd seen the soldiers coming back from the front to the hospital and I knew now that it was going to be different. I think it's important to answer the questions still in role because I think it gives them an opportunity to ask not just factual questions which I could give them as a teacher but they could also get inside the character and it's their opportunity to talk to Wolfgang. Often I can then gauge from a teacher's point of view as I'm answering the questions how oh, this person has listened to the point and wants to find out more about it. And there will be one or two people who would be quite happy to see if they could catch you out. You know when you got the parcel um, how come you said that, um, that no one will know where you are and Clara knew where you are? She would send it to my battalion or regiment's headquarters and then they would forward it on. Yeah, you're right, I can't tell anyone where I am, can I? Well remembered. Kayleigh? You know the bread that you had, not the one that you got from Clara, but the other one? The Russian bread. Yeah, the yes. Russian bread did. Um, did you ever get annoyed with it? Did no, you ever get... no. Problem is, is when you get the same food every single day. So to get some bread from home, because it's a taste of home, and it's something that's different. Scott? Um, did you do another letter to Clara saying thank you for the food? I wrote my thank you letter, yes. What was interesting is that almost all the pupils were clearly inside the story themselves. They were wrestling with the ideas of what it felt like to be away from home, what it felt like to go and visit a village where there were only three people surrounded by the rubble. And I think that's one of the difficult things when we've got a very factual heavy history curriculum is to get at actually it's about people and events and how they how people respond in different historic circumstances. Now then, first of all, I want you to write me based on what Scott was saying, did I write a thank you letter to Clara? What sort of letter do you think Wolfgang is going to write back to Clara? Janet? Is it an informal letter? An informal letter, yes, certainly. So what sort of news do you think Wolfgang could put in his letter? Um, maybe when, um, when he saw the three people in that village. He may talk about those three people. What else has he been involved in that would give him some news to send home? Um, setting up the hospital. Setting up the hospital. So you could bring a lot of those sort of things into your letter, couldn't you? I think the power of working cross-curricular is that the objectives for both the history, if it's history and literacy, are very clear, and you select the two objectives which actually enhance each other, so that actually the literacy has a context where pupils want to write, which so often literacy teachers are looking for the context. The history teachers have the content, the ideas, but haven't got the time to write. 
I think it's, it's using time twice and the pressurised curriculum, that's just so important. What is it that Mr Hicks does that you think actually helps you to get those memories so clear? Um, showing us videos right. and footage and actually um, being the main character. What, the fact that he actually goes into the character? Yeah, instead of saying he did this, she did that and that. Double If you wish to. Yeah, don't, don't worry about the name, just call it beer. Well, it's really interesting the way they've managed to pick up on your character there. And they really yeah. seem to have felt the words they're using is that they've got inside your head. Well, hopefully they do sort of become the person. Yes. And be able to write from that sort of point of view is one of the things yeah. I hope they can do. If they're going to empathise with these characters and learn from someone else's experience, if they be that person, mm. it's an easy way to do it. It'll be interesting to see how different yeah, they are so as well, where they, they might put their own selves in and yeah, interpret in different right. ways. So. Right, like we normally do, is there anyone who would like to um, share what they've written so far? Uh, Robbie. Another letter home. To my love, Clara. Hi, thank you for your food. It was great. Obviously, I didn't eat it all to myself because I shared it with my platoon. Besides, we're all in this together. The German bread was wonderful and it didn't taste like the Russian bread. It tasted like home. It's better here than it was in France, in Dieppe, in Lens. We were greeted welcomely by the Ukrainians. You'd be lucky to get a smile out of any French. OK. Contentious there. Janet, would you like to read yours out? Dear Clara, you have no idea what this meant to me. The food just brought me back home. I desired the salami. It smelled so strong and good. And don't hesitate to send more. I think all children, if they have a, an empathy with this person, they're going to want to write something. And the other thing that's really important is they write without pressure. They're not writing to practice for a SATS paper. They're not writing to fulfil a particular literacy target. But here you can write from the heart, if anything. You can get yourself inside the character, and that's where history takes over from literacy. Dearest Clara, my mind is losing all images of you since we have left each other. I'm healthy. Thank you for the food parcel. It was strange. We arrived in the Soviet Union and people greeted us instead of hating us. I entered a village and I could see only three people in a background of rubble and burnt wood. The headquarters of the Wehrmacht ordered my platoon to make a hospital out of an old building. I'm really impressed with all the writing that I've seen and people have put in today. I feel like it's helpful because it can just relate to the character. I like, feel like um, he's someone you know. I feel I know him better as a person instead of just a ger German soldier. Part of it is that out of Mr Hicks' imagination and our own imagination. I thought it changed my opinion of German soldiers because I thought they were brutal and they'd kill anyone out their way. If he had chosen to be a different person, um, the whole understanding would be different because that person has got a different point of view to Wolfgang. Okay, that was excellent. The great thing about the story is you just bring things in. Provided you put it in a historical context and everything you try and do is accurate, well, you, you can go anywhere. So it's only... Well. They're going beyond what you're offering and, and drawing in. Well, and hopefully it's giving them a wider picture of the Second World War. I think it's a big event and um, hopefully a different perspective for them. To see Bernie and Graham's full analysis of this lesson and learn more about using this approach in your classroom, watch Interpreting Wolfgang's Story.